Um, so Nick, go ahead. Okay. Well, everyone, thank you for uh, coming to see us uh, on this Wednesday afternoon. Uh, my name is Nicholas Carr. I'm here with my colleague, Victoria Costa-Dinova. We are staff members at the English Department uh, at the University of Amsterdam. We are here too with a couple of our star students, Babetta and Kaspar, who you'll hear from later on as well. This is just a, a relatively informal information uh, evening. Uh, I'll talk for about 20 minutes. I'll hand over to Casper uh, and Babetta. They can uh, tell you some uh, aspects of student life for about 10 or 15. And then for the rest of the hour, we'll be taking your questions, uh, as I said, please via the chat function. Uh, we do have a bit of a deadline. Uh, that is quite strict for seven, so we'll we'll be uh, winding up very much on the hour. So without further ado, uh, I might take you through this uh, short slide presentation, which really just gives you the sort of introductory nuts and bolts, uh, the basic information about what you would be studying if you choose to come and study English with us uh, next year at the UFA. Uh, I'll break it up into uh, these three broad sections. Uh, I think probably the most important one is the middle one, right? But by way of introduction, uh, I'll outline some of the uh, perhaps unique and special features uh, of our English department and of studying at the University of Amsterdam. Uh, and at the end as well, I'll foreshadow uh, a couple of things about paths, if you like, that the uh, English BA may lead you onto, but uh, the core of the information that I think is probably most pertinent uh, to your decision-making process as to uh, your BA choices uh, for, the, for the next year is going to be that middle section, uh, the program. We at the University of Amsterdam have a bit of a, uh, a theme to our English program and to our department, uh, and it is the idea of English uh, as a world language, uh, or indeed, if you like, the plural Englishes, global Englishes. Uh, we are really interested, we're passionate about uh, the way that English functions uh, as a global language and the way that, that uh, English has, if you like, spread and varied into Englishes as it has uh, spread uh, around the world. Something else to keep in mind too about uh, your study choices uh, is of course the geographic location, uh, the academic setting that we're talking about there and or indeed the dynamic location. Uh, of course, we're talking about Amsterdam uh, as a place to live, as a place to uh, study. Uh, it offers, I think, really an unparalleled sort of uh, cultural and lifestyle experience to go alongside your studies. And uh, I'm sure our students will have a few other things to say uh, about the life of a student uh, in such a bustling and cosmopolitan city as Amsterdam. It very much uh, is complementary with our sort of uh, such a global uh, and varied uh, and cosmopolitan city uh, is, is one of the reasons why as a department, we really, I suppose, have a, have a rather uh, a diverse and cosmopolitan focus in the way we think about uh, and the way we study English. Uh, there's a quick look at uh, most of our uh, staff, uh, and I guess in keeping with our theme, they do come from a fairly wide uh, swathe of both uh, native and non-native uh, speakers. I'm looking at my colleagues' faces here. We've got people from Germany, Canada, the United States, Great Britain, Australia, uh, South Africa, North Macedonia, Turkey, uh, and of course the Netherlands. Have I, have, I, have I remembered everyone, Victoria? Is there any other? No, I think that's it, right? Okay. Um, you'll get to know us all uh, if you come uh, next year and, and uh, you'll be able to see us all in the flesh. And of course, uh, these images and a lot of what I'm talking about today are of course already up on the UFA uh, website. Uh, and uh, as you inform yourself about your study choices, you can always go in there and poke around, read a little bit more uh, about each of us uh, and our particular research and teaching interests. They're all up there uh, on the English department website. 
We also have, uh, it's worth pointing out, and I wish I had, I, I would say roughly two thirds, one third, but I could be uh, corrected there, not just staff from around the world, but uh, a, 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 an increasingly international classroom. Uh, I would say each year, our uh, global intake uh, rises as a proportion of our overall intake. Um, and I would say uh, at the moment, probably a roughly 60, 40 or two thirds, one third uh, split. So your experience as a student uh, will be informed as well by being in a, uh, a fairly international classroom uh, with hopefully for your sake, uh, a kind of diverse and varied group uh, of friends and peers drawn from uh, all around the world. That's our building uh, in the background there, PC Hofthaus, or at least it's going to be our building for the next uh, couple of years. There are longer term plans uh, to move us even more, in, in, more into the heart of the old city, uh, but certainly for most, if not all of your degree, if you come and start with us next year, will be based there uh, at PC Hofthaus, uh, which even though it's a bit blurred there is in fact I'm told by people who are experts in architecture and architecturally very interesting and indeed prize winning uh, building. Uh, and you can see where it's located there uh, on the single, probably certainly no more than a 10 minute walk, I would say from Central Station. Uh, easy to access for those of you who are coming from outside of Amsterdam uh, to study. And of course, uh, the, the more important thing is, is the view from the building as you look out rather than the view from outside as you look in. Uh, and from all sides, you see a uh, beautiful canal and street uh, inner city Amsterdam views. It's a wonderful ambience, uh, surrounded by nice places to get coffee and lunch uh, and everything else. And of course, we're in Amsterdam, which is of course very much uh, a global city, very much a bilingual city, uh, a city that uh, functions uh, as an important nodule, if you like, of world English and uh, a fantastic uh, variety of Englishes that get spoken uh, in daily life, not only in the university, but all over the place in Amsterdam as a city. It really is a wonderful uh, location to be studying language, uh, to be studying anything for that matter. All right, now let me get into the nuts and bolts, uh, which is probably the thing that's, that's uh, most interesting to you all. I'll lay out uh, in a second kind of core component of our degree uh, as you would probably know, with the university uh, uh, program, it's typically a combination of, right, of kind of fixed core curriculum, which you then get to uh, amend and adjust for your own purposes by selecting various uh, elective courses to tailor uh, to your particular passions uh, and your particular goals. Uh, and I'll mention also some of the other uh, opportunities, if you like, uh, in particular things like internships and uh, studying abroad, uh, which are very much popular and fixed parts of the English BA uh, at uh, the University of Amsterdam. Uh, this, is the, this is the English degree in a nutshell. Uh, you study linguistics and you study literature. Uh, when you're studying a language, I think this is the traditional and still consistent uh, model for studying languages in Dutch universities. There's a linguistics component and a literature component. Uh, both of them, of course, intensively focused uh, on language, dare I say it, at its best and most interesting uses. Uh, but uh, it's an inherently, if you like, interdisciplinary uh, degree. You'll be uh, combining two different approaches uh, if you come and study your uh, English degree with us. Uh, a recent innovation, uh, which wasn't always the case with the English BA at the UFA, is that there is the possibility to specialise in your second and third years. After the first year, which is always a 50-50 split between literature and linguistics, uh, you've got the option of con essentially continuing with a 50-50 split uh, or narrowing your focus uh, and even in the core curriculum, uh, only doing literature courses. That, of course, doesn't mean that you can't study any linguistics, even if you choose to focus on literature. You can, of course, take linguistics courses 
uh, as some of those electives that I mentioned. Uh, but whether you choose to specialise or whether you choose to maintain the interdisciplinary focus of your degree, uh, your first year uh, is going to be uh, this introductory curriculum, which lays out for you the fundamentals, uh, half of them in linguistics and half of them in literature. Uh, something to note, those of you, especially if you're coming straight from uh, school or from other institutions of higher education, which all have their own kind of calendars. Our calendar is known as the 884 system uh, at the UFA. Uh, each semester is broken up into blocks. Two of those blocks are eight weeks, uh, and the last block uh, is of four weeks. Uh, so that's how you'll be arranging your time. Also, with, with not really much of a break in between them, uh, Dutch university study uh, is very generous in the amount of teaching uh, and contact that it provides. So a typical course, right? Some courses are bigger and they'll, they'll spread across two blocks, but a typical course will occupy one block. And you can see in those short blocks, those are, if you like, more tailored and focused courses that are done over a shorter time, but more intensively. Uh, a standard course will run uh, over each eight week uh, block. And the usual pattern that you would take as a student would be two courses for eight weeks, another two courses for the next eight weeks, and then one course in the four week block. Uh, and that's a typical semester. Relatively short, uh, but also relatively, uh, if you like, teaching and, in, uh, teaching and contact heavy. In terms of what would lie uh, ahead of you, if you came uh, to join us in your first year, this would be a, a useful rule of thumb, right? You would typically have six contact hours per course. So given that in a normal block, you'll be doing uh, two courses at the same time, you could expect uh, pretty much 12 contact hours, 12 hours of class per week, which would be six hours for each course and your typical uh, division of labour uh, in a course would be that there's a two hour lecture each week. And of course, lectures are in big sort of halls where you might have 100 people uh, all sitting there listening to the same uh, lecture. And then uh, in your first year, two two hour seminars each week and seminars, uh, small group interactive learning, sometimes uh, not even interactive, but I would say student led learning. Uh, where uh, you guys get to participate, to lead the discussion, to ask questions, to apply the things that you've learned that week and so on. Uh, and you'd have four hours of that per week uh, in your typical first year uh, curriculum. So 12 hours of contact in a typical block uh, divided six hours per course over your first year. As you progress through the degree, you become a little bit more seasoned and a little bit more independent. Uh, that drops down a little bit to something more like typically four hours per course uh, rather than six. These are the names of our courses uh, in your first semester. If you come and join us in that first block, you would be taking the introductory course Literature One, which is essentially an introduction to studying uh, English literature uh, and the equivalent for the linguistic side of the program is called Stories of English. In the second block, which is where we are at the moment, uh, this is what I'm teaching, literary theory, uh, which if you like lays down uh, the key theoretical approaches that you'll be developing and adapting uh, and applying throughout the literature component of your degree and uh, the changing English language. And there's the first, one of the first indications perhaps of uh, our kind of global English's uh, focus of the way that English uh, has been introduced, the way English has been changed as a result of its spread uh, around the world. And then we have these, uh, as, I, as I foreshadowed, these short modules in the four week block where you do uh, in, in the first semester, a course called Texts in Focus One, that's a literature course, right? Which is a, a short but intensive uh, study of one longer, uh, 
really significant, if you like, uh, work of literature. And typically on those ones on the on the literature side, uh, what we do is, is as students, you end up presenting your research at a kind of conference that we put on. You, you sort of act as an academic uh, for half a day uh, and we put on a little conference and put you into panel groups to discuss uh, your, uh, your papers and your presentations. In the second semester uh, of your first year, you continue in those purple courses with the core uh, literature curriculum, which begins in second semester to follow a historical trajectory. So you start with literature two, which is early modern literature. So say from the sort of Renaissance period, Shakespeare. Uh, and then uh, your last literature course for the year brings you up to uh, the end of the 18th century. On the linguistic side of the program, courses like language in use, rhetoric and writing, another intensive uh, seminar in block, uh, in the four week block, training you in research methods uh, about linguistics. Victoria, is language in use, is that the, is that the sociolinguistics course, am I right? Language in use is uh, syntax. Syntax. The grammatical structure of different types of Englishes in as used in present day context. Nice, all right. Well, a nice combination with that and rhetoric and writing, right? You have the sort of uh, the study of persuasion in language, the, the, uh, the powerful tropes and devices uh, of speech making and so on, combined with then the more fine grained technical analysis uh, in a language in use. So that's what you'd be doing if you came with us uh, next year. Those would be your uh, the full suite of courses, uh, 10 courses in total of your first year curriculum. And as I said, at your first year, because it's your first year, uh, it's, a, it's a fixed curriculum. There's not yet any room for you to start uh, uh, adapting and choosing which paths you go down. That begins in your second year. Uh, in your second year, you will continue with uh, a fixed literature component, which gets things into the 19th century. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, you get faced uh, with an increasing range of choice where what used to be the fixed curriculum bifurcates, right, divides into two, uh, and then you get to decide if you're passionate about linguistics, you could then choose to follow language in society. That's the sociolinguistics course I was thinking of, very popular course. Uh, if you're passionate about literature, you could choose to focus on the literary track, which would be a course called Literature Empire and the Postcolonial World. And you can see those are two of those longer courses. Uh, those ones spread across two blocks. Uh, and then in your second year, you would be starting to uh, fill your plate with elective courses. Uh, I won't go into the, all of the details about electives, but uh, essentially uh, you get given, I think, nine electives over the course of your whole degree. A small number of them you have to take as English electives. The rest of them uh, are electives that you can take. If you, if you love English so much, you can just keep doing English electives uh, and pack out your BA degree to the max uh, with uh, English content. Uh, or you can pick and choose and sample courses from uh, all over the UFA. You can do a few science courses or marketing courses, computer programming courses, philosophy courses, history, uh, whatever it is uh, that you like to mix and match uh, in your uh, electives. And it might be that you start to think about uh, as you go through the degree using your electives to set yourself up if you're going to go on and study a master's, for example, uh, how you might fill your electives in a way that's going to get you a foot in the door uh, of whatever master's course you're going to take. Uh, and the curriculum continues in the second semester uh, of your second year, again, with, with your choice between either a literary focus by doing contemporary literature or uh, continuing your passionate uh, combination of linguistics and literature with language variation and change. The final piece of your historical survey of literature, which is literature five, right, into the 20th and the 21st century. Uh, and then uh, your final texts in focus course for the uh, four week block, another uh, intensive study of uh, a great work, if you like, of uh, 20th century or contemporary literature. Uh, and then as you're heading towards uh, the exit in your final year, that is if you, if you get through the degree in the, if you like, the standard period of three years, 
uh, this is when you might, if you wish, choose to uh, undertake, for example, an internship or study abroad. I wish I had the statistics on me. My, uh, my guess would be that perhaps 40%, maybe more of our students go abroad, something like that, uh, where you would spend a semester uh, at another university, whether in Europe or farther afield, uh, on exchange, uh, studying uh, to widen your horizons. Your third year uh, uh, core curriculum is, is very limited because as I said, you're, you're, you're getting towards the end of, of your degree. It's more about your electives. Uh, and indeed you, you write a thesis in your third year as well. But there are a couple of, if you like, advanced theoretical courses uh, called Philosophy of the Humanities and Debates in English Studies, which serve as kind of capstones to, uh, to your degree as you head into writing your thesis. And that's what those uh, brown blocks are all about uh, in that final uh, section. You do a, a seminar essentially teaching you again about you know, research methods and how to uh, write a thesis. And then you've, you go off uh, after having studied for two and a half years and you've worked out what most interests uh, and what you are most passionate about. And that's what you write about uh, independently, uh, your own freely chosen uh, and your, your own tailor, tailored and, and uh, personally crafted thesis that explores an area of your own interest. Uh, as I mentioned, right, uh, in terms of electives, you can take elective courses from within the English uh, program itself, which would be uh, electives on literature uh, or on linguistics, typically uh, on, on you know, core areas or core periods of, of literature, things like that, a kind of special capsule if you're particularly interested in romantic poetry or modernism or something like that. Uh, but also uh, other electives, as I said, right, where you can mix and match uh, and, and broaden your horizons uh, and be a bit more eclectic uh, in the sorts of disciplines and fields of study that you expose yourself to uh, in your BA. Uh, as I mentioned, in that uh, third year, you have uh, the chance to uh, undertake an internship to do a minor a minor is a, sometimes it lasts for one semester, sometimes it lasts for the whole year, is a, a special course of study, uh, with typically I think amounting to 30 credits, which might be typically five courses, right, which has been created by the university and has an official status, if you like, as uh, a recognised introductory component to some other discipline other than the discipline that you're studying, right? Uh, and you might undertake minors, as I said uh, earlier, to give you a foot in the door to, to enable you to, give, to meet the entry requirements for a master's program if you're wishing to then switch disciplines after your English BA uh, and go on, as I said, to do computer programming or marketing or sociology or teaching or something like that. You can have, if you like, done your first instalment of that area of study by doing a minor uh, in your third year. They're a very popular uh, and a very important uh, part of some people's university planning. So of course, your minor is officially recognised on your academic transcript uh, and so on. Uh, and of course, as I said, the ever popular option, which of course uh, was lost over the last couple of years due to COVID, but is uh, alive and well now and is back on the agenda, uh, studying abroad frequently uh, to other universities in Europe, but uh, I've had plenty of students who've gone off to Hong Kong and Singapore and Canada, the United States, uh, Australia, uh, and places far and wide. The university uh, maintains a, a massive network of exchange relationships with, with other universities uh, all over the world. Uh, and if you're passionate, as I said, about kind of widening your cultural horizons to complement uh, the sort of, you know, in the classroom experience that you've been having, uh, then you can take, uh, take the opportunity to spend a semester or in some circumstances, even a whole year uh, abroad in the final year of your degree. After the BA, well, of course, this is what uh, everyone faces uh, at the end of their BA, the decision to either switch uh, disciplines or continue to deepen their uh, expertise in English uh, by doing a master's or heading out uh, into the job market. Uh, in the English uh, department, we are, of course, uh, a rather specialised source of second language teachers, right? English language teachers, 
uh, of course, but um, people who come and do the English BA, I don't know if any of you saw the little video in which I spoke about this, but uh, people who do the English BA go on to all sorts of uh, amazing and wonderful careers. It's, it's, it's a fantastic, it's, it's got a fantastic vocational value uh, in a city like Amsterdam and in a country like the Netherlands, and it can set you up for going further in academe, moving into translating. I meet so many former students who are working in translating, whether that's literary translation or technical uh, translation. We have a vibrant student body, perhaps Casper uh, and Babetta might talk about this, uh, of students who are themselves here to do an English degree uh, as an adjunct to their own uh, creative careers. I've got filmmakers who are former students, singers, songwriters, writers, poets, uh, actors, all sorts of reasons why people might want to uh, improve and perfect uh, their knowledge uh, of English, all sorts of uh, work, other work in publishing, of course, in tourism, uh, NGOs, marketing is, of course, a big one. Uh, I mean, this is the point about having a focus on English as a global language. Uh, it is uh, uh, if you like, uh, uh, a door that opens into a global uh, career path uh, for all sorts of work that, 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 that rests upon international exchange, cultural, business, government, whatever it is, uh, so much of it happens, right? English is the common currency of so much of that activity and specialised qualifications in English uh, open the door to all sorts of paths uh, like that if you're interested uh, in those sorts of careers. The master's programs that our students go on to, well, there's a large or there's a significant number of master's programs that in one way or another build upon and develop the English BA, uh, whether those are, if you like, purely literary or purely linguistics ones that you can see uh, towards the top there, but uh, lower ones further down, the language, literature and education, uh, the education masters and so on. This is where people, like I said, if you want to go into something like the teaching track, you may have done a minor in education in the last year of your BA. That opens the door to doing these teaching oriented master's degrees, uh, which you then do for, I think, one year. And then you're out the door and into a school somewhere uh, teaching and so on. But of course, uh, as, long as, you've as long as you've structured your undergraduate studies uh, in the right way, uh, you know, almost the entire suite of master's disciplines can be open to you as you uh, move out of the BA and go on to further study if that's what you choose to do uh, after your uh, English undergraduate studies. Now, I hope that that's uh, been neither too quick nor too long. What I might do is in a second hand over to Casper and Babetta to talk to you about life as a student, the practicalities of going around and attending lectures, the social opportunities, the student networks that exist, uh, the recreational, if you like, uh, uh, activities that they organise as part of the study association, which also supports your studies. Uh, the, 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 the student uh, association, the Studi for Anything here does an amazing job uh, of enriching your studies and making it something that's uh, really memorable and, and that you know, gives you things that you take with you far beyond simply, uh, if you like, book learning and technical qualifications, uh, but friends, horizon broadening, cultural experiences, uh, a network of uh, peers uh, and colleagues that you hopefully take with you uh, after your English BA and, and perhaps maintain through uh, the activities of our alumni association. So I might uh, ask Casper and Babetta to uh, unmute themselves uh, and introduce you to that smorgasbord which is really the other side of uh, the classroom side of life as an English student here uh, at the University of Amsterdam. Um, thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Casper. Um, I'm part of Etc. the study association. That's something uh, different than uh, a student association uh, because we don't do hazing and um, and and it's much easier to get into and to say no, I don't want to do certain activities. Uh, we um, host bottles, uh, book clubs, uh, trips to, for instance, last year we went to Antwerp and Bath. Um, yeah, so a little bit about that. 
uh, but now more about our personal experiences. Um, I found it the first block, the first two blocks to be um, quite difficult, but in a good way because you are challenged in a completely new way. Uh, you get a lot more responsibility because um, teachers aren't like checking your homework anymore. Um, so you, you you get prone into the deep end, but that's a good thing because it's a safe environment and the professors are. He's frozen, right? Or am I? I'm here. Yeah, is he frozen? Yeah, perhaps Babette can take over. Is he still okay. there in the room with you, Babette? Yeah, he's frozen. I'll take over. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, the first year, I, he said he thought it was quite challenging, but it was a safe space because every like everyone's willing to help. I would say I thought it was very doable, but uh, yeah. Um, yeah, as a student, I think, especially in Amsterdam, there's a lot to do. Um, obviously, you have your study associations, you have your student associations, which I think are quite, like you can pick and choose what you want to do, basically, because everything's available to you. Um, other than that, yeah. Um, there's like studying takes a lot of time but there's a, enough room to do your own thing as well a lot of people have um a job next to it or i do other stuff uh yeah i don't know i think you can talk and they can hear it from here oh okay great um yeah uh, my... <laughs> <laughs> okay um yeah um for reading wise it's quite a lot of reading but i have dyslexia so does the best um so that's doable um we you can listen to a lot of text and and yeah that's very doable um yes, i think that's it right i mean there's probably a lot more but yeah i think those are the main things Okay, well, since we've got quite a lot of questions and some of this, some of the questions are perhaps related to the student experience, so you can contribute in that way, I suggest we've got 20, perhaps 25 minutes, given that we started a bit later. Um, I've been following the questions as they were coming in and first thought, should I organize them thematically, but I think we risk missing some of them. So I'll just start from the top and then uh, address um, each one. So the first one, um, as a student more interested in the literature, in literature, including novels, poetry, etc. Um, is this the best program to choose in comparison to literary and cultural analysis BA? So perhaps Nick, you could uh, well, well, uh, well, well, uh, without treading on any toes. Right. Um, I would suggest that the short answer to that question is yes, because we are the program that uh, fully studies literature. I'm, uh, I'm, I've got a number of students who formerly were studied literary and cultural analysis, or I've had students come at master's level to study with me who did literary and cultural analysis uh, in their undergraduate. And my understanding is uh, well, firstly, it's it's cultural it's cultural analysis as well as literary, right? So there's a lot of uh, analyzing um, photographs, conceptual art, uh, urban design, uh, all of these sorts of things as well. But my understanding is that that because it, it has such a different, such a wider range of cultural objects, uh, they tend not to, for example, read novels from beginning to end. Uh, they tend not to. Uh, engage with with poems other than short poems. Uh, so if you if if you're passionate if you're a passionate reader and you're interested in in doing literature, uh, then English uh, would be your primary avenue of of doing that, where you actually get to substantially read you know long and serious uh, novels and poems uh, and dramas. Uh, uh, yeah, that would be my answer to that question. Thank you. Um, could this bachelor be a foundation for me since I want to eventually become a professor in English? 
Or is there one that's more fitting? I would say absolutely. Uh, if you want to be a professor uh, of English, that would be this would be the bachelor's. Of course, um, having a, you know um, having academia or being an academic as a career goal uh, means that you have to continue working uh, through a master's and a PhD, and uh, obviously you have to be a very good student. So it's not so much the choice of program, but also um, the sort of uh, the quality of work that you do and the devotion. But definitely this would be the most straightforward choice of program for that kind of career goal. Um, is there accommodation as part of the university or do we need to find housing in the city? So I think here, uh, Casper and Mabeth can talk about it a bit more. I would just say, um, yes, there is accommodation from the UFA, but it's quite difficult to get, I think. And you, there's also a limitation to the number of semesters that you can use the university housing, if I'm not mistaken. And so the majority of the students um, have to look for accommodation um, sort of outside of the university. And it's very, very hard. I don't know if you've noticed this at, uh, on the university website, but uh, the recommendation, the official recommendation from the UFA is not to arrive uh, in Amsterdam if you um, if you don't have accommodation, but perhaps uh, there's something to be said from the student perspective. I would say if you're looking for housing, there's a bunch of, um, I know Facebook is a little bit outdated, but there's a lot of uh, Facebook groups called like um, Room, Saud, Amsterdam, all that sort of stuff, join all of them. And that's where it usually uh, people who are just trying to find a new roommate, stuff like that, uh, post their availabilities or like the if something comes available. So I would always suggest that. I think that's the, and enroll in, I think it's room and students of owning that, I think. Hmm. Yeah. On the, uh, I know that on the, on the, on the website, you go to the, the, the UFA homepage and then you click through and to, to, if you like, get to the, 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 the BA English um, uh, section of the website, there's, it, it takes you through step by step the application process. And there's a distinct app there. There's sort of two tracks of, of application that you can do. There's uh, an application for someone who uh, does want university housing and there's an application, uh, a separate application for someone who doesn't want university housing. So it's uh, the university gets you very early on uh, and, and learns whether you are or are not seeking housing. Um, and so, yes, I think as with everything, you know, the sooner the better uh, that you make that decision and start your search, uh, the better situated you will be. But of course, yes, Amsterdam is famous for um, uh, having more students who want to come here than there are uh, houses to house them all. Uh, is this bachelor often chosen as a second degree? I'm not sure I understand the question, but... Um, I've, got, I've had a significant number of students who are doing it as a second degree, yes. Uh, either, either after doing one or concurrently with, with another yeah. degree. Students, students who are very ambitious. I just had a uh, last week or the week before, I had a graduation of uh, one of my thesis students who graduated cum laude, having done two degrees simultaneously uh, so yes it can be done yeah is it possible to combine english and theater sciences with extra classes or a minor i would say yes uh, absolutely it's 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 always possible uh to combine uh your degree uh, your english degree uh has has a, 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 a it's always possible to do a minor in your english degree so, so absolutely. a very big theme in the in terms of study programs at the Faculty of Humanities, because choosing this program, you're part of the Faculty of Humanities at the UFA, a very big theme uh, in sort of, you know, the way that educational programs are offered is freedom. So the freedom to choose your own um, program in a way, depending on the interests that you have. So although the programs are established as such, there's a lot of possibility of uh, combining uh, subjects depending on your interests. Um, yes, how does the study distinguish itself from programs at other universities within the Netherlands? I would say uh, first and form foremost, uh, well, apart from the freedom of combining it with other with other uh, subjects or uh, uh, courses, 
the main focus um, of global Englishes or world Englishes that is a theme in all the courses, both in the linguistics courses and in the literature courses on, of the program would be um, something that um, is unique to our program. Um, anything else to mention in this respect, Nick? Um, something kind of informally off the top of my head that I've heard from, from former students or students who've done an English uh, BA elsewhere is that they've often commented on the uh, the number of native speakers uh, on our staff and the relatively high uh, level at which our English uh, curriculum is pitched and, and the, the high level of English proficiency uh, sort of expected and inculcated uh, in our program compared to some others. That's about the only thing that I can, can think of in terms um, of compared yeah. to other universities. I think our student body is a lot more in international Yes. Uh, so maybe that's changed over the past years, I don't know, but we have a very like diverse um, student body as well. Yeah, so I think we have, we do have numbers in that, they kind of vary, but we have about 50% uh, international students, yeah. Um, so that, uh, right. Uh, is there any specific requirements for international baccalaureate students, like a minimum grade required? How competitive is it to get into this program? I'm not aware of any sort of minimum grade requirements, but maybe I'm wrong. I do know there's a question later on, so maybe I can cover that. Uh, IB students are exempt, I think, from taking a, a language proficiency test. So having that degree previously is uh, a way of showing that you can, uh, that you have the required uh, proficiency um, in English. Yeah, uh, and th this this degree is one of the non the the, the university has a, a selective degrees and non selective degrees. So this one is a, is a non selective, and if you're coming from an international uh, setting, uh, again at that at the English BA uh, section of the UFA website, you can there's a there's a country uh, search, and you can enter the country uh, where you have done your uh, high school qualifications, and it will tell you if there is uh, any requirement in terms of what your leaving qualification from school where you've done school uh, where that matches with whatever the Dutch uh, requirement is for, for domestic students here. Right, so this information is available on the website um, in terms of how it applies to you, but is it competitive? How competitive is it to get into the program or how hard is it for international students in Europe to apply? Is it more complicated than for Dutch students? So I think it's different. I'm not sure if it's more complicated. I think it just, it really depends uh, what kind of background you have. I think, I think that there isn't that much of a difference, um, especially if we're talking about, you know, within the European Union. Mm -hmm. um, students outside of the European Union um, they need to apply earlier, uh, there is a different deadline, and also you have to look into the kinds of um, the proof of English proficiency that you need to do, so that may be um, a bit different. Anything to add there? Spot on. All right, uh, are there any recommended prerequisite IB courses we should take? I'm not aware of this actually, but again, I would encourage you to check on the, apart from English or rather the fact that you don't have to provide an additional proof of proficiency, I'm not aware of this, but I would encourage you to check uh, the very detailed explanations on the, um, on the pages about the application process. Um, I'd, be, I'd be very surprised if there was any limit on an IB uh, student yeah, coming in, right? I'm, I'd be very surprised if there um, was. Could you take this uh, program online? Uh, sorry, part time, not online. Part time, yes. Absolutely. Part time. So, you know, also on the website, just sort of you take half the courses the first year, half the courses the second year, what a full time student would take in one year. Um, Standard part time would be six years, but we have students who mix and match and do a sort of combination of full and part and end up doing their degree in four or five uh, or six. Yes, very flexible. How many students are in the first year? Usually just over a hundred or around a hundred? Yeah, between a hundred and a hundred and ten. Yeah. Is attendance to lectures and seminars mandatory? No. 
No, not not. I mean, if you want to learn, it is, but uh, no <laughs> one's no one's looking over your shoulder to check whether you've attended uh, or not. It's it's university, so it's uh, you, you're going to motivate yourself if you're going to attend, and and we won't follow up if you don't. Is an international student uh, required, or would I be required uh, to give English proficiency exam? Or would an IB diploma suffice? Yeah, as I said, an IB diploma is enough. Uh, and again, this goes, the reason that there's, there are different answers to this question is that it depends on the background. So you can check, uh, there's clear explanation about what you need to do. Um, for example, I could choose German or history electives. In principle, yes, you could choose any elective on the list of electives across the, not only the faculty, but across the university, if I'm not mistaken, right? Of Absolutely. course, every course has got uh, entry requirements. So you may need to do some extra work. Like if you decide to take a data science elective, mm -hmm. maybe you need to sort of know your linear, linear algebra before you take it or something like that. Um, all right, uh, teaching free weeks. Yes, there are teaching free weeks in between the blocks. So there's three blocks in one semester. The academic year at the UFA is structured in a particular way. <laughs> so uh, block uh, semesters are split into blocks and there are two teaching free weeks, I think, per block. You get, you get a teaching free week after after the exam week of the previous block. So you get a you get a week off to recharge your batteries and get ready before your, your classes start again for the next block. Right. What are the main differences between this course and the linguistics BA course? The main differences are that we are focused on English first. So um, even though there are obviously references, certainly in the linguistic linguistics courses, references to other languages or connections with other languages, the focus is English. And then there is the combination of linguistics and literature. Uh, the linguistics BA is so, you know, uh, to, to put it that way, purely linguistic, and uh, it focuses on linguistics and many different languages. So if you're really strongly interested in a linguistic study, then that would probably be the, the, the option you go for. Is the linguistics BA taught stuff. in English? Yes, it is taught in English, but they also have, they have a lot of different specializations. Um, you have a number of languages that you can specialize in. There's a very strong focus on sign uh, language linguistics as well. So, yeah. Uh, what works do you study at text in focus, Nick? Oh, um, <laughs> George Eliot, The Mill on the Floss was done one year. I've never taught text in focus. It's always my colleagues who are doing that one. Uh, longer okay. work. I mean, long work, you know, Moby Dick, um, long works by Dickens. Uh, as I said, you know, a, a thick novel by George Eliot, a, a, a big novel by David Foster Wallace in, in the contemporary text in focus, something like that, right? So, I mean, in these eight week blocks, one thing that we can't do is pile you up with a lot of really thick novels because we just don't have the time uh, in, in, in such a short block. So uh, think of your sort of, you know, thicker, uh, if you like, classic novels uh, are the things that we focus on in, in text in focus. And those ones that I mentioned, um, David Foster Wallace, I think it was what, Infinite Jest, um, uh, George Eliot, The Mill on the Floss, Herman Melville, Moby Dick, uh, Charles Dickens, Bleak House, things like that. Babette? You can always choose. I think in the first text in focus, there's like four choices, at least for me. And then the second one was two choices. I think in my, it changes per year, but in my year, it was a portrait of the artist as a young man. I think Jane Eyre, but that's now in the normal curriculum, I think. Um, <laughs> so you can pick, you can pick basically. Yeah. Um, is there opportunities to study abroad is the opportunity to study abroad and take a minor only available in the third year? Uh, yes, yes, because you need the other two in order to get through the rest of the fixed components of the degree. So uh, in your, what you need to do if you're going to go abroad and or do a minor is you need to bring forward some of your third year courses into the second year in order to clear the space then uh, in your third year uh, for the minor and or going abroad. Uh, specific subjects you need to have taken. We've addressed this question. I don't think so, but make sure that you read 
um, the details on the website. Difference between a minor and an elective. An elective is just a course and you have to take a specific uh, number of electives as part of the main program. A minor is an additional, in a way, like a smaller program that you take alongside. Yeah, a, min a minor is a cluster of electives yeah. focused on one topic. Yeah. Uh, if I follow the education master after this bachelor, can I teach English in other countries as well? I suppose that depends on the other countries. Yeah. I would say so. Is there also a subject in which you get taught basic English skills? We don't have a specific subject because we've incorporated these kinds of things into our content courses so that we make the teaching of sort of presentation skills or writing skills um, kind of con yeah, contextualized in the material that we're teaching. So you get certainly academic writing training um, as part of every course, actually. Yeah, um, well, so, so those are incorporated, but I would point out that in terms of if you mean by English skills, as in simply the ability to speak and write English better, uh, no, that's something that you take care of before you come into this degree. Uh, this degree right. is sort of pitched uh, pretty much at, at sort of a, a native level expectation of, of proficiency and, and it's not part of the, this degree to kind of help train you up and get there. You have to do that before you, uh, you come in and do this degree. This degree starts from the standpoint of just assuming that everyone's uh, at or about native speaker uh, capacity. Yeah, so another question a bit later on, would you recommend this course to native speakers? Yes, of course. Yes, we have significant numbers of native speakers English, who come from... Right? from it's from... about studying aspects of English linguistics and English literature in culture in a broader scholarly uh, context. Will the Harting scheme be available for UFA students in the next years? Yes. I expect so, yes. Yeah. Yes, my colleague, Dr. Ben Moore, and uh, uh, is, is primarily responsible for uh, administering the Harting scheme. Yeah. What is the environment like at the University of Amsterdam? Amazing. <laughs> but maybe Babette and Casper can say something about that. Um, I really like the environment at our uni. We're in uh, Peso Hoofdhuis, which is uh, not the main location for UVA, which is Rutus Island, which is a lot bigger, which also means that in our location, there's uh, a lot of foreign languages and Dutch are given here. And so there's a really, uh, there's an environment where everyone does almost the same thing. So it's really easy to talk to people and to, yeah, to, to, yeah, to study and feel comfortable here, I think. Thank you. Uh, what subjects are available to choose as a minor if you study a different BA? I think you can just have a look at the website because there's a lot. Right? There's a lot of minors. Just have a look at the, uh, the, the study guide. Click on the link to have a look at the study guide uh, on the UFA website and you can see, uh, follow the links through a whole list of minors and it will tell you which are the, which are the, which are the specific courses you do uh, in every uh, uh, identified minor. I told you, remember, a minor is basically a bunch of electives on the same topic, and it tells you which electives you would do yeah. uh, so comprising each minor. For the, for the last three minutes that we have left, I'm going to do a quick, quick sort of, uh, what is it called, fire round or something? Quick hitters, yeah. Yeah, how many students? We've said around 100. Uh, is the degree valid for different universities after you've done the bachelor and want to upgrade to a master's? Yes. Yes. Go to a different masters. Do translated versions of Greek and Latin texts also have a place in this bachelor? In principle, no. Possibly yes, but this is not a ancient literature BA, right? No, they would be. They, they might be in some of the English Maybe. language electives as context to yeah. studying literature, uh, but you know, in principle, uh, we study works that, that were originally written in the language of English. How many hours a week does one spend on the study? Full-time study, 40 hours a week, just like a full-time job. Can you take a part-time job next to it if you plan your time well and think that you can do it? Yes, but that can be a kind of a reason for sort of, you know, if it affects your study success, then you have to take that into account. The study load is 40 hours a week for a full-time study. How many students are in the first year? We said already. 
average per class. Usually lectures are everybody in the year. And then in the seminars, we have about 20, 25 students per class. Uh, how enriching is the location of Amsterdam to the experience of this course? Um, perhaps Babette and Kasper can say something. Uh, well, the international environment is very, very useful because we've got speakers of different types of Englishes and different languages. So that's, yeah, that's very useful because you can observe a lot of the things that we talk about, certainly in the linguistics classes, you can observe them around you. So in that sense, um, it's useful. And well, and we're so we're so lucky because in in English and in a few other disciplines, our building is just a building in the centre of Amsterdam. Like we're not on a campus. Like Reuters Island is out on a campus. Other other aspects of the uni are sort of isolated out in a little bubble, a bit further out uh, on campuses. Whereas we're just a building in 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 the, in the sort of beating heart of old Amsterdam. And uh, I mean, I, I just find that so much nicer as a university context, you know possibility to combine this BA with creative writing? I think so, yes, you know, as a minor as, or as an elective, but you have to check. Do you have to pass the IELTS test if we're from Europe? It depends on what you've done before. So the country or the region doesn't play a role. It depends on what your university degree or sorry, high school degree, the kind of high school that you've had, possibly you do. Um, how and where would one take the test? Well, that is up to you to figure out, but there's a lot of information on the website. Um, just uh, Google IELTS and then see how it works. I suppose they've got a website. Um, how does the BA differ from how English is taught in a Dutch secondary school? Well, this is a university program and it has nothing to do with uh, the acquisition of English or English proficiency. It is a study, a scholarly academic study of aspects of the linguistics of English and the literature of English in a global context. I think that. But Beta and Casper, did you guys you guys, you guys would have done English at high school and then took yeah. a step up to here? Yeah, we both did. Um, what you do the last year of uh, high school uh, just gets bigger most of the time. You don't do grammar. Uh, but what you do is you read texts and analyze them. Uh, and for the linguistic side, you often read papers and interact with uh, linguistic phenomenon. Phenomenon? Yeah. And just dissect them and work with them. So it's, it's, it is different, but often bigger than in the last year of, of, of high school. We, I uh, did a lot with First World, War, uh, First World War poetry. And we also do that. But it's way quicker, you do much more and yeah, it's, it is fun. All right, so in order to, I'm gonna summarize the last few questions together. Would it be possible to combine this program with some other ones? In principle, yes, you have to pay attention to the time management and how you plan your work. Uh, restrictions or requirements for admission, please check the website requirements because everything is spelled out there and it depends on your uh, specific case. Uh, you may need to pass the IELTS test, as I said. We accept about 120 students a year, I think. And the final and a great question to end with, can you live in Amsterdam without knowing how to ride the bike? Yes. <laughs> is it much more inconvenient i would say probably yes I let me say let me say this I, I, first of all i can ride a bike but i have lived in amsterdam for seven years and i made a point because everyone kept talking about riding a bike to me i made a point of not buying a bike i lived here for six years without a bike and i loved it because i'm a walker excellent yes so it's not a big city and you can walk definitely and it's a beautiful beautiful city so walks are amazing here okay so i think <laughs> just a bit over time thank you everyone for joining and any final comments or we look forward to seeing as many of you as possible in september yes. next year in your opening week of the english ba at the ufa definitely. thanks so much for coming along everyone <laughs> well, there was just one final question about having, it would be useful for students to have um, a taster class, and we do have that. 
So make sure you will be informed about it. Make sure you sign up for it. We have a taster lecture in December. So you can see what classes are like. Okay. All right. How could I contact for additional questions? Uh, note, note, at, note the names of me and Victoria, and and, and yes. you'll be, you'll find our email addresses on on the uh, English department website. So if you go to the UFA website, you can find um, the staff members and Nick, Nicholas Carr, and Victoria Kostadinova, so you can get in touch with us. Perfect. All right. So stopping the recording. Stop recording. Yeah. Okay.